Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and we have uh, an amazing professor and just an amazing person, Scott Livingood, who I've gotten to know over the last year, a professor at Arizona State University. Scott, welcome. Good morning, Dale. Happy to be here. Good. Yes, yes, ha yes. So happy to uh, have you. Uh, you know, you and I have been part of weekly calls about entrepreneur zones, and we'll get into that a little bit. And, right. and uh, you are, are really one of, the, uh, one of the best entrepreneur professors in the, in the country. Um, but I always like to start with origin stories and say, where, now, where were you born and where did you go to high school? So my father was in the Army, so I was actually born in Germany. Wow. I uh, lived there for very, about two years, and then we moved to Colorado, the station in Colorado. And my parents decided that's where they wanted to retire. So we bought a house and then moved around a little bit to a couple other places, but moved back once he retired when I was 13 to Colorado and then have been there relatively basically ever since. My mom actually still lives in that same house oh, wow. that we've had for a long, long time. So Colorado is kind of always going to be home. The, and, and what high school did you go, did you graduate from in, in Colorado? Harrison High School on okay. the south side of Colorado Springs there. Okay, and then where did you go to college? Uh, I did uh, my undergrad at BYU, and I worked for a little uh, Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. Worked for about four years, went back to get my MBA there. Uh, worked for a little bit longer, and then got my PhD at the University of Maryland in College Park. In College Park, wow! So you really have um, you've, you've you've seen the country, you've covered the country. And yeah, so I think that you know being an army brat kind of instills that wanderlust in a lot of people, right. and so it's hard for me to sit still. For too long, and I really enjoy exploring new places and uh, living lots of other uh, uh, in lots of areas. So it's been fun. So, so your dissertation was about entrepreneurship, and what was the focus of the of the dissertation? That's right. Yeah. So I did my degree was in strategic management, but I looked at uh, kind of corporate entrepreneurship. So I okay. looked at uh, the introduction of new cell phones mm -hmm. in the mobile industry, okay. and looked at the competitive dynamics and in influence and, and impact of new product introductions, uh, which is very entrepreneurial uh, in that industry. Right. Wonderful. And so now let's talk about your, your professional career. So uh, um, you've been, have you been a professor the entire career, or did you do some other things before you, you, you became a professor? Yeah, no, that's been it. So uh, my first uh, job was at the University of Florida, okay. uh, and I was on the tenure track there for about three years. Moved to the Ohio State University for about four years. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, it's a publisher parish kind of a world, and right. uh, unfortunately I wasn't publishing hmm. nearly as much as um, the, the profession would have liked. So I recently kind of switched to the clinical side of the uh, profession. So I'm still a professor, but I don't do as much research. I really focus more on the teaching side of things, and that's, it's been really rewarding. Uh, I mean, those who can do both very well are, are, are great. Um, but it seems that my kind of talents, passions, and interests are a little bit more on the teaching side. So I've been fo focusing on that for the last couple of years. Well, yeah, I mean, you're an extraordinary, extraordinary teacher. And as you know, I'm at Fairleigh Dickinson well, University, so I see the, you know, this, this idea. And, that, you know, a lot of the rules are, are, you know, they're living in yesterday's rules, you know, and publishing, you know, and many folks can't teach their way out of a paper bag but they write articles and, and vice versa. So, uh, right. um, and so now um, you've been there for a number of years. What kinds of entrepreneurial courses are you teaching or have you taught at Arizona State University? Yeah, so ASU, is, it's, it's been great to be here because they really embrace, well, one of the biggest things is inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in our charter, they kind of say we, we measure ourselves not by whom we exclude, you know, some of the elite universities say we have an a, you know, acceptance rate of 8% or 6% right. or whatever. And for them, that's very important. For, for us, it's more about inclusion. And so uh, one of the things that I've embraced here is really kind of uh, online or distance types of learning, mm -hmm. uh, especially for entrepreneurship, where people who are either working full time or maybe live on the reservation or uh, have other demands that don't allow them to go to traditional you know, brick and mortar, face-to-face -face types of learning environments. Uh, and so I've really been able to create courses not only specifically for the classroom setting that is, is a branch beyond that, but also um, some professional institutions. So I was able to create a series of courses, for example, with, for Uber, mm. uh, one of our partners here. Oh, wow. uh, they wanted to kind of uh, expand some of their learning opportunities for their uh, drivers and their families. And so I was able to create a series of courses just specifically for them that were always going to be self-paced, mm -hmm. online, 
uh, courses on entrepreneurship, and that's led me down uh, many different paths. So beyond simply just the traditional, you know, normal face-to-face -face type of, uh, you know, institutional supported uh, learning environments, but also being able to branch out and, and create courses in lots of different ways for lots of different groups that otherwise might not have access. That is, I mean, that really is, is phenomenal. Is Uber based in Arizona or where they, where are they headquartered? No, they're, uh, I think they started in San Francisco out oh, in okay, California okay. is where they started. But, okay. uh, and I, honestly, I don't know. It, it kind of was one of those things where they, someone in the university reached out and created a partnership. And wow. this was really the first initiative that they wanted to try. And uh, I, I did one course as a pilot test and that actually went really well. And so we've expanded out now to, like I said, create those five courses. And uh, it's gone exceptionally well. We've been able to reach literally thousands of people who would not uh, otherwise have had an opportunity to learn more about entrepreneurship. So it's that, been great. That is brilliant. And that's a model course. It could, I mean, a lot of other companies, you know, like an Uber could, could really, uh, really use that. And so you really have done some fascinating things throughout your career. Now, I know you're a Seinfeld fan. I'm a, I'm a Seinfeld fan. Uh, so you've incorporated Seinfeld and entrepreneurship. Tell the audience about that. What, uh, how did that come about? How did you decide to, to, to write a book? Yeah, thank you. That's been fun. So I did launch a book uh, last year, uh, one of my pandemic activities. Uh, it's called The Startup of Seinfeld, mm. a multimedia approach to learning entrepreneurship. And so what I've done essentially, when I teach, I, I certainly want to cover the basics, the, the principles and the concepts and the theories of whatever it is I'm teaching. But I like to do it in a little bit of a fun way. And I like to kind of add some context. Early on, uh, I would use Far Side comics, Calvin and Hobbes right. comic strips, those kinds of things. But as we, as the audience, as my audience has gotten a little bit younger, I guess, and more multimedia savvy, I started using incorporating videos a lot more in the way that I teach. And so the way that I did Seinfeld was to make little clips that were examples of the concepts and principles and theories that I would present in class, just as a, as a way to maybe better contextualize and a, a relate to the concepts that, that I was presenting, but also kind of do it in a, in a more edu uh, educational but entertaining way. Mm -hmm. So an edutainment type of approach to that. And so as I got to do that more and more and more, I had you know, a, a, an unorganized collection of clips and uh, you know, resources and those kinds of things. So I just decided to stick it all together and that's how the book was born. So. Wow. Uh, I do. I have the, the principles and the theories with some graphics and then a link to uh, an edited Seinfeld clip that's on YouTube uh, that the, the readers can enjoy while they, I guess, watch the book to a certain extent. Well, and, and, and you, you really have, um, I mean, you're an empathetic professor where you, you really understand where the, the audience is coming from. I mean, that really is a gift and a skill, and so many professors understand where they're coming from and they teach as if they're teaching to themselves, you know, instead of the opposite. And so, uh, well, so and I, I really Unfortunately, love a lot that. of entrepreneurs do that exact same thing. Yep. So yep. they will create a product or a service that satisfies their need. And right. that's a great place to start, but lose touch a little bit with their target audience and not understand how the customer might benefit from that product or service. And so that's not something that I was born with. It's certainly something that I've been forced, I guess, to create or, or to develop over time. But you're right, I do try to at least uh, put myself in other people's shoes as best I can. And that's, you know, a, an ongoing process for sure. And so let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the Seinfeld uh, book. Um, you just share a couple tidbits with the audience to whet their, whet their appetite about now. What, yeah, what are some of the examples that you've used? Because it's, it's fascinating, especially for me and my generation. I love, love Seinfeld. Yeah, sure. So um, one of my favorites uh, was, is actually in the very first chapter uh -huh. of the book, where because uh, I, I had you know I kind of de described the entrepreneurial process, mm -hmm. which the way I say is you know it's it's um, identifying opportunities or problems that need to be solved, generating creative solutions, uh, assessing risk, trying to minimize that risk, uh, uh, do, uh, j um, assembling resources to make that vision kind of happen. Mm -hmm and then presenting it to an audience. Mm. And so I found when, when Kramer uh, was, you know, he was a friend with, with George's father, Frank, who had some supportive issues uh, <laughs> with his upper body. And yeah. so came up with the, the man's ear or the bro, depending <laughs> on uh, who you talk to a little bit, but a, a supportive undergarment for men. And, uh. and it actually, Kramer, 
perfectly follows that entrepreneurial process, which Interesting. I can't think that the writers did that on purpose. I didn't write that entrepreneurial process right. with Kramer in mind, but it was just a serendipitous kind of uh, connection wow. between what I was teaching and what I saw in the show. And so I had to do a little bit of editing just to kind of get those, highlight those points. Uh, but that's kind of a fun thing. You know, Kramer was very entrepreneurial, very crazy, uh, very you know innovative in his thinking. And I was able to find, I think I have 46 cl such clips in the book that really match pretty well. I, I had to take a little creative license there, but match pretty well some of the entrepreneurial principles that I would teach in a normal class. So it's been really fun to, to explore that side of, of my interests and passions as well. I, I just think that's brilliant. I mean, I, I really think that's... Um... That, that's brilliant because that's where I have a 16 year old daughter. So I, you know, that's, that's where they're at. That's what they, you know, that, that makes it real. And so, well, uh, and it's been fun too, to, and I want to say that's one of the beauties I think of entrepreneurship in general is, you know, seeing things that other people can't and, right. and being able to apply one's per unique experience, expertise, perspective, passions, talents, all of those things combining in a way. So I can benefit others by, by providing a, you know, a humorous context for entrepreneurial principles, but it's been so rewarding for me as well to let both of those, again, parts of my passions shine, not only right. the, you know, right. the theory and the, the practice of entrepreneurship, but the love of Seinfeld and the, the creativity and, and ingenuity that it brought. But being able to put in that together, I think is something unique that I can provide to the world. Uh, now, it's not curing cancer. It's not going to, you know, change the world necessarily, but if I can do it in my own kind of unique way, it's, it's a very reciprocal kind of mutually beneficial process where others can benefit right. from me doing something that I really, really have enjoyed doing. But, so but it's, it, a, it's been a wonderful uh, entrepreneurial journey for myself as but, well. But Scott, it really does change the world. I mean, entrepreneurship is really, I don't care what invention, it can be healthcare, it can be, you know, that innovative, and that's why I love this show, Entrepreneur State of Mind, this innovative yeah. thinking is the answer to so many of the problems. And, and so many of the answers are sitting right in front of us, whether it's on TV or, or other areas. And I, I, I love that formula you're using. Are you looking at some other entertainment vehicles that, to, to do something similar, to take it to the next level? I am. So I have a couple other books in the hopper. Um, I, uh, you know, trying to get through this first one and, and then create some more uh, online courses and, and doing some of those things. But uh, yes, I definitely want to continue down this path. It's been a lot of fun, like I said. And so want to continue to try to bring creativity to the things that I teach. So uh, stay tuned, and hopefully I'll have some more uh, interesting books to share in the coming well, years. I guarantee, I guarantee you will. And so, so we've become uh, you know, friends because you've joined uh, Hunter Hastings, who's a mutual friend who I'll have on the show in the future, um, are looking at this, this concept I created called Entrepreneur Zones to uh, mm -hmm. create entrepreneurial opportunities in economically challenged communities. And you... You have been really just one of the, the, the greatest minds of the, of the group coming together. And so we're, we're going to take a break in a, in a minute, a commercial break, and we're going to come back and talk about Entrepreneur Zones. And, 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 and by the way, Scott did just an amazing video. Um, he's talented at, at doing these, uh, the, these videos with the, with the characters and so on um, about Entrepreneur Zones. So uh, we will be back in a, in a couple of minutes. Enjoy the commercial break, and we'll be back with Entrepreneur State of Mind. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with Professor Scott Living Good, and we began talking about this idea of, of, of entrepreneur zones. I wrote a couple articles about this, and Scott has really been, been really one of the brain trusts in really helping us do that. And, and so part of that is because of his experience in Uganda. He, uh, he went over there, and I'm going to, Scott, I want you to tell that, uh, that story to really help people develop the entrepreneur state of mind in a place where, uh, where they may not have had opportunities to get support to do that. So, Scott, tell us about this story. How did you end up going to, uh, to Uganda? Well, it started with those Uber courses that I mentioned. I, okay. uh, another group at ASU saw those courses, and they were already trying to create some online courses for displaced refugees in developing countries. Mm. Uh, they were focused on English as a second language and wanted to expand into entrepreneurship saw my courses and thought, you know, it would be a great uh, opportunity to kind of leverage that. Uh, so we started in uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and Iraq. And so I had an opportunity to go to Uganda to try to get a better sense of our constituents. So the people we were trying to teach, and honestly, that was a very life-changing experience yeah. because I thought it'd just be simple, you know, just to, to, to copy and paste what I'd done for kind of an Uber audience. Um, or maybe a, a more, I guess, advanced entrepreneurial audience. But I actually got to speak with the entrepreneurs themselves, the refugees themselves, with others in the ecosystem. So there are professors, there are incubators, there are resource providers, investors, uh, other people around there, and realized that my approach to teaching them entrepreneurship needed to be different than I would, say, in a classroom setting or maybe for a more, uh, I guess, developed um, audience there. And that's not to disparage them at all. It's just a little different resource base right. and experience base. And so, but actually getting there and speaking with them and, and kind of living a, a, you know, a week in the life of seeing the resources they had and the resource constraints they had really opened my eyes to a different, more process oriented approach to teaching entrepreneurship. Interesting. And, and, um, and that really informed uh, you and, and really realizing that you can really help people develop that entrepreneur state of mind, whether or not they're starting their own business or working for, for somebody else. And so, so what did you find? What were some of the, the findings as you worked with folks at a grassroots level to really help them uh, become entrepreneurs? Yeah, absolutely. So and I agree 100%. I think people can be entrepreneurial mm -hmm. whether or not they start their own business. That, that's kind of our, our standard definition of what we think of entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship to be. But you know, if we're talking about creative problem solving and identifying problems to solve and doing it in a unique and value added way, that can be done in all sorts of contexts. And so, but one of the things that I learned, and this kind of goes into a little bit of, of the, the philosophy behind me writing the book, right. is really trying to teach people in a way they can understand. Mm -hmm. So one of my examples, for example, if I were to teach the, the topic of entrepreneurial finance, either in a classroom setting or somewhere else, I would, I would kind of be a little bit comprehensive about the sources of financing. So I would start with you know, your own personal funds, do friends, families, maybe right. friends, family pools, um, angel investors, venture capitalists, banks, uh, and then eventually going public with an IPO market. Um, in Uganda, when your idea is, hey, I want to you know, sell bananas on the side of the road right. or to help you know, feed my family, or I want to do a bicycle you know, repair shop or something like that that is you know, underneath a tree on the side of the road, they don't care about venture capital. They don't care about stock markets and, and those kinds of things. So right. I had to then kind of alter my thinking of, let me think about how an entrepreneur would approach what's step one and do, a, again, very process oriented mm -hmm. approach. So I would still teach maybe in, you know, in course four or five after they've already built a successful business and after right. they're growing and expanding and maybe going international, those kinds of things. Then maybe I can introduce the concept of venture capital or, you know, other types of things. But for the first year or two of their existence, they just need to understand basic personal finance, budgeting, you know, basic, basic kinds of accounting, those kinds of things just to get them started. 
And then as they grow and progress, I can teach them more advanced right. types of what we would call typical kind of entrepreneurial process types of things. But it really changed my focus to, to again, put myself in their shoes right. and really take that kind of step-by-step -step approach to help them be successful where they are and where they want to go. And as you said, I mean, it, which, is, which is a brilliant point, is that, I mean, there's poverty around the world, unfortunately, and, uh, but there's poverty in our backyard here in, in the United States. And so to take some of those principles, and, and that's one of the things we're working on in these entrepreneur zones, to create these ecosystems, but also to help and meet people where they are so they can become um, successful business folks. Um, Absolutely, you know. and that's, that's how we got connected. So I, I, yeah. Hunter had interviewed me about my book and about my work in Uganda, and... You know, he, he brought the thing, you know, it's great. And the people in developing countries certainly need that help, but we don't have to look very far in our own backyard to find people who also can benefit from this entrepreneurial right. state of mind, this entrepreneurial mindset. And so he said, I, I got to connect you with this other brilliant person over here in the East Coast mm -hmm. who's doing great things in these entrepreneur zones. And that's how you and I got connected. Yep. And it, I think it's been a, a great partnership because we have such a passion and belief in really entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial mindset as being able to change the lives of people and generations to come here in America, in developing countries all over the world, just, you know, it's a very important concept that we certainly want to get out and help people along their path to being successful. And, and Scott, I just want to publicly just thank you for your support and, and uh, for this Entrepreneur Zone. Um, for the audience, we, uh, um, you know, I, I've written a couple articles, we got the governor to endorse it, and so we're uh, it was in legislation, and I'm leading a working group. But outside of it, you know, we're really looking globally to really, uh, um, really, really establish these things in, in in areas that many people have given up on. And also, Scott and I and Hunter Hastings are part of this group of nations. You'll see on on uh, one of my shows this group of nations um, a con virtual conference to really talk about entrepreneur zones to really get people to excited about the idea of of entrepreneurship. And and so. Um, you know, Scott and I are teaming up to really kind of push back against this idea that all that matters are the Fortune 500 companies, and so we got to give them breaks. And you know, it really um, all that matters really is the the, the local or the local the, the, the local entrepreneurs. So now you've developed curriculum, Scott. Talk a little bit about the curriculum that you've developed to really help to meet people where they are and and, and grow those entrepreneurial skills. Yeah, so I essentially had to kind of reconfigure uh, most of what I had done before, again, to take that more kind of step-by-step process-oriented approach. And so mm -hmm. it's still a series of five courses, but the first one is all about, you know, I introduce kind of what is entrepreneurship and, and who becomes entrepreneurs and those kinds of things. But it's all about the problem to solve. And more importantly, the people who have those problems that you're trying to solve, because that's ultimately what entrepreneurship is. It's really that creative problem-solving right. value-added uh, ingenuity there. And so it's, it's all about, again, finding a problem to solve and then talking to those people who have that problem and better understanding, you know, what is it that they're trying to solve? What are other ways that they're trying to solve it? And then course two follows up with, now we can start working on a solution. Right. So many times right. people want to jump ahead to, I've got, you know, a solution to a problem without really truly understanding the problem. Right. Uh, Einstein famously said that if he had an hour to uh, work on something, to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes on the problem and five minutes on the solution because so often the, the more deeply we understand the problem, right. the solution kind of presents itself, particularly you know as as, as it's combined with our own That's a great experience point. and expertise and those kinds of things. So those first two courses are all about again the problem and then the solution. Then it's focused on let's actually build a firm, which is the third one. Then let's scale that, which is course four, and then five. How do I leave a legacy? that will be long lasting perhaps for generations to come as I now have this thriving uh, enterprise. We, we really do. I mean, we're, we're naturally entrepreneur. That's part of s surviving in life as being an entrepreneur, that we come yeah. up with, as you said, solving problems. And, and so, Scott, the more I hear you talk, the more I, I really think about higher ed and how wrong they have it. So here you're doing training for Uber and you're doing things in Uganda. I kind of think that that's even better than a boring paper in some journal that nobody <laughs> that nobody reads, you know, and so. Well, I, I, might, I might tend to agree with you a little bit there. I certainly don't want to disparage the profession. That's certainly no, a, no, an important that's not, part of what, of what we do as well. But um, I, I, and it's not for everybody. I, I think those who can research and do it really well, that's great. I think we do probably need to combine a little bit more of that real world perspective mm -hmm. with a lot of the ways that we research 
Um, and, you know, I think there's ways for all of us to use our talents and abilities to, to help each other for sure. Well, and, and we're excited to become, as, as you know, we're, we're bringing on a small business development center, which, which provides free consulting to local entrepreneurs and, and you know, um, and small businesses. And we're hoping um, to get some professors. There are some great professors that see the value of that, but there's still a lot of professors that are just stuck in theory and, you know, don't realize that young people want, well, how does this apply to the real world? And so, uh, you know, we, we've, you know we're, we're moving there because of, 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 you know, I teach family business world, the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. course at, at, at uh, the Silberman College, and, and you're, you're teaching your, your courses. So what's next for you as you go forward? Scott, you're so talented, you're doing stuff. We're going to make this entrepreneur zone a, a big thing around the world, but what else are you, are you looking forward to do in the future? Well, I've got, I've got a lot of things kind of in that hopper and, and always kind of looking for new opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things, just briefly on what you said, I, I think, you know, for me, kind of the, the best way I think to teach is a combination. Again, I, a lot of my stuff is available online yep. uh, for people who want to kind of do their self-paced. And I think that's great to kind of lay the foundations. And maybe that's good for about 80% of that educational process. But I'd love to see maybe you know, something it, along those lines of maybe that last 20% is some kind of mentor. Right. Or maybe professors who have only taught in the classroom, maybe it's good for them to actually get out and actually mentor and consult perhaps with early stage companies or entrepreneurial uh, you know, businesses where they can actually take some of that theory and apply it. And, and with that kind of personal interaction with, with professors and with uh, other entrepreneurs and other mentors, maybe they can actually build that to be something successful. So there's a combination of blended learning with right. a lot of it being kind of, again, those online uh, introduction to the, to the concept, but then have somebody else guide them a little bit uh, to, to give some feedback for them actually doing it. And I think that would benefit both parties yep. uh, very well. For me also, I, I'd love to kind of evangelize a lot of this. I'd love to, mm. you, know, I've, uh, you know, speaking opportunities and ways that we can actually share the message of entrepreneurship and, and again, how accessible it can be. And um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at next is really trying to launch a speaking uh, career as it were, or opportunities to kind of spread the message to more people uh, and that's, that's something I'm really excited about. I think we have an important message to share yeah. and just looking for uh, lots more platforms to uh, share that message. No, no, I mean, you'd, you'd be uh, just great at delivering, at delivering that, uh, that message. Do you have a minor, entrepreneurial minor? At uh, I don't, actually. My minor was Japanese, well, well, so I did live in Japan for a couple of years. Right. Um, and that's why I call myself the Seinfeld Sensei. Sensei right. means Sensei, teacher in right, Japanese, right. so I've kind of made that as a kind of a branding thing there. Um, but I actually, in, in my PhD, I kind of minored in organizational behavior. Okay. Uh, so a little bit more kind of the micro side of, of strategy there. But, um, but entrepreneurship is just something I've always been interested in. And it's, uh, you know, I've taken a few courses here and there, but mostly I've just kind of done it by experience and just by it, the combination of lots of research of my own and then, you know, kind of doing it on my own as well, uh, launching the book and, and, and those kinds of things uh, that's been really informed my process. And I think that's really that, that combination, again, that blend of personal and professional experience, I think really can help me, I hope, uh, to be able to share uh, the, the magic and the power and the miracle of entrepreneurship with lots of people. Yeah, and you really, you, you really do a great, uh, great job. Is there a, a, an entrepreneur minor at ASU at all? There is. is. So we have a major in, in the business school. We have a major, a minor, and a certificate program. So okay, nice. in the course okay. I'm teaching now, it's kind of a, kind of a basic introductory uh, introduction to entrepreneurship. I have dance majors. I have environmental sustainability so, yeah. majors. I have people from all over campus, which I love, and I bring and you know, people from different parts of the country and different parts of the world, where that difference in perspective and yeah. that diversity really helps us learn from each other. And, and, and so I try to get them to discuss and, and share their uh, perspectives as much as possible to really bring that uh, you know, different uh, perspective into what it is we're learning. It makes a big difference and, and, and great. And well, you're the right professor to do that. Well, unfortunately, we're at the end of, of time. This, this 30 minutes goes so quickly. Uh, but Professor Scott Livengood, thank you so much for being on here. Just some great, great insights. I want to thank the audience uh, for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind, and we will see you next week. This is your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, saying uh, have a great week.